Welcome to a new video in my home automation playlist. And just about two months ago, we were talking about the software changes for the iHost. And uh, well, we got another minor version, well, actually a couple of different versions along the way. And I think last time I said that we are going to see some, you know, matter changes coming along in the next couple of releases. And actually there are some matter changes, but also some other big, smaller changes uh, uh, that we have now received with a new uh, firmware version. So at the moment we are currently at uh, 2.4.1 and uh, the last video was about 2.3.1 and actually there were a, sub, uh, a few sub uh, updates very shortly after that so probably some bug fixes that would introduce in 2.3.0 so we uh, we jumped one made uh, one well minor version and uh and again one sort of like sub version after that so here we are going to have some new matter stuff so there are some new matter support which i'm only going to talk about because i don't have those matter devices and then we also have uh, new zigbee support for new class of devices which is again really really nice but again i can only mention this to you because i don't have those type of zigbee devices there are some supports for uh, some node ready enhancements uh, especially some rgb uh, supports in order to control them from node red and if anything is improved in node red i'm always happy about and talk about so that at least i'm going to show you with you know some caveats and also, this is not strictly iHost firmware related, but I was just using my new iHost and my NS Panel Pro starting giving me notifications that, oh, there is an iHost and it has a dashboard so I can show it to you. So I'm going to also show you how that works because that's completely new to me and I missed in the NS Panel, it must have been in the NS Panel Pro firmware update or changes log where this new feature was in, um, introduced because this is the first time I'm seeing that notification and uh, it's a nice addition to the NS Panel Pro. Again, it gives me one more reason to buy into the Wi-Fi version of the Sonoff and also the sort of the iHost version of the Sonoff world. So let's look at all these in sequence. So let's talk about Matter now. And I already mentioned in version 2.3.0, I mean, uh, for this section, we are mostly going to look at the changelog. It, one of the big enhancement was the, uh, the beta version of the Matter Hub uh, feature, uh, which is mentioned here. And as I said, it was very limited uh, uh, support for just, I think, lights and plugs or switches and plugs. And that's why I said, you know, there is going to be loads of changes coming. There is going to be more device support coming along. And actually, this is more partially what happened. Because if we look at some of the um, the other changes, I mean, it was mostly like, uh, you know, bug fixes. But then, uh, and this was also, again, bug fixes. But if we look at the this version now, 2.4.0, now we can see that now the... Um, the Matter Hub now supports discover, discovering nearby devices using Bluetooth and also they uh, added support for dimmable lights, on-off lights and temperature lights. I would assume that this uh, is uh, uh, the color temperature and the extended color lights, so probably like full RGB support. And uh, yeah, so that's nice because now we can also use uh, uh, matter enabled or matter lights in our uh, iho setup which was again it wasn't possible just about two months ago and uh, matter which now runs on the matter 1.4 specification but i think at the moment one point sorry 1.3 but i think one 1 1.4 is actually released now already i mean it was it, it was also released very soon so again, we got support for new Matter devices and on the latest one, again, there, uh, so for 2.4.1, we have also new Matter stuff. Well, that's again for the Matter Hub and all, uh, sorry, for via the Matter Bridge support. But again, those dimmable lights, on-off temperature lights, colors, they were added to the Matter Bridge. So that's the function that if you have a ZigBee um, compatible light, connected to the iHost, the iHost would be able to um, basically share the device using the Matter Bridge into a Matter compatible network. So again, let's say a HomePod that uh, uh, as far as I know, it would not be able to handle Zigbee devices natively, but now you can have an iHost, the iHost talks to the Zigbee and, you, and, and shares it over to Apple HomeKit using the uh, Matter Bridge. So that's nice. 
So the next set of changes is uh, related to Zigbee. And actually that's in 4.0, uh, sorry, 2.4.1. And as you can see, they have added support for a new, um, you know, class of devices like alarms and anything which is related to volume. So like, you know, speakers and that sort of stuff, air quality, CO concentration, smoke concentration, gas concentration. So these are important because these devices were not able to be paired to the iHost in the past but now we can do them. So now they, you know, introduced probably the tires, the various um, ways they are going to handle these values. Uh, so probably some, you know, units of measures that they, you can assign to them. And now you can also use them in scenes. Unfortunately, I don't have any of, this, any of these devices, so I won't be able to show you these, but uh, it's nice that we see support for additional devices. And, uh, to be honest, I would be interested to see how they can be used in the in the scenes, whether you can create triggers, let's say if the air quality is a certain value or the CO concentration is a certain value. It doesn't really say here how it, whether it's added to the uh, uh, to the scenes, uh, but it usually, you know, they do it at the same time. So that takes care of the matter and the um, and the Zigbee stuff. And there is this uh, very smaller note, which say they added support in Node-RED to specify RGB values and, the cont and uh, control the color uh, of the light precisely. Okay, so let's see. Um, oh, yeah, they added offset for humidity and, and uh, temperature readings for this particular device. But let's see how this looks like in uh, Node-RED. And if you do this, make sure that you update the Node-RED to the latest version as well, because that will bring the latest version of uh, the, you know, the components with it. So if you go into the info, at the, uh, you can see that it says it's the latest, but then you, you have, I mean, I don't have it on the full screen, but uh, you have some stuff here on the right way where you can, you know, check the latest version and update to the latest version as well. And once you are in Node-RED, make sure that you check whether your components are updated as well. So here you can see that uh, the EV-Link Cube version is 1.3.3. So I am actually on the latest version now. So I'm going to show you how this RGB control looks like. And unfortunately, I cannot physically show this to you because I, I mean, it took me some time for me to find, oops, where is my focus? So until I find my B1, uh, son of B1 light bulb, but it looks like that it, it sort of died because uh, I can't, well, it is still, it is still visible in my evening application, but when I try to control it, it says that it's offline. And when I power cycle it three times, so it, you know, I, I get it to reset. It does reset because it starts breathing, but then um, uh, the phone cannot find it. So it looks like the Wi-Fi module is dead in it or something like that. So I cannot get it to work, but uh, we will see how that looks like in the, uh, on the, uh, on the Node-RED side. So first of all, in order to control anything in, uh, through Node-RED, you scroll down and you select this control device node. And then in the settings, you go into the iHost, well, the whatever configuration you set for your iHost. And then we are going to select lights. So it's going to be this light. And as you can see, only the B1 is supported, um, mainly because I have, for example, I have a few B2, a B2 or B02 sort of lights as well, but they are not supported in the EV-Link integration. So the B1 lights are the only ones that I am able to bring over from the Wi-Fi EV link to iHost. And so now you can see that you have all these options. So you can control the power, you can control the bright, oops, uh, I need to turn on the power. Uh, then you can control the brightness and you can control the color temperatures as well. Or if you want RGB, you can also control the RGB value. So if you will set this one, and then if you give a message to this node, then it will set the, uh, it will turn the lights on at 50% 50, uh, 50 and into this uh, purple color. And uh, I don't think, uh, well, I couldn't find any way to give, provide all this data to the, to the node. So if you want to, you know, control different brightness levels or different colors, you actually have to create multiple of these control nodes or pointing to the same device, but then, you know, specifying different settings here. It's, uh, 
yeah it's it's a little bit odd but um but maybe they will make changes to these uh in the future as well so you can actually inject the actual values from the input message and don't have to use multiple nodes anymore but um, it still it works and actually with this we got to the same level what we can also or what we could already do within scenes so if i want to do it within the ihost then i could already do that so if let's say i select tap to run i select a smart device i select the b1 so even though it's not working, it's already visible here in the, uh, um, in the editor because it was added to the um, uh, DVLink account in the past. And now you can see that you have the same options here. So you can turn it on, you can change the brightness and you can change the color temperature or the color. So the same function is there uh, already, but now if you want to do it from Node-RED, now you can do. And finally, let me show you that thing that I mentioned about the NS Panel Pro. As you can see, my iHost is uh, laying down here, chilling here. The network cable is really strong and it's always tipping it over. And by the way, this blue tint or this purple tint is the B1 that you can still uh, see here. So if I bring these two NS panels online, now you can see that it's showing the cast screen. So actually this uh, uh, appeared as a new screen, so not the webcast but it appears as a new screen. And on, the, and on this particular iHost, I have two of these screens configured. So now you can see that I can select any of these two screens and it, it loads the screen. It is a little bit slow, but at least it, be, uh, you know, it loads that customized screen, which uh, I have created in the, uh, on the iHost. So you already have all those ties here. Uh, you can show that the graphs show up as well. You know, everything is working. I mean, of course, because of the different layout, it looks, I don't know which one looks better because at least this one, at least it appears a little bit bigger than the vertical NS Panel Pro, but then you have more visible space. So you can see more devices here. I think it's really up to you whether you want bigger stuff or smaller stuff. And if I scroll back to the top and if I go, I can load the next screen as well. This has a different color. As you can see, everything is the same. It's a sort of like a little bit of a different aspect. Um, each looks a little bit different, but you know, both of them are usable. And um, you know, it's nice that I can, you know, like use the I sorry, the NS Panel Pro in order to control iHost because to be honest, in the past there was no real reason to buy an NS Panel Pro if you have an if you had an iHost. Um, because you could only control your Wi-Fi, you know, devices there, which you can still do, but now you can also create whatever, you, you can also control whatever you have on the iHost while well, through these screens. So that's a nice integration because no integration from the iHost to the Wi-Fi word and, you know, the EVLink application or the EVLink devices were uh, available in the past okay controlling was available but that's sort of like you know display stuff you know the ios doesn't appear in the in your evening application it still doesn't but at least the ns panel pros can be used to talk to the ios locally uh, obviously so that's a nice addition i think it just like it also gives so, uh, you and while well, everyone for more reason to also invest in these small display devices even if you are using local control with the iHost. So I think that would be all about this uh, 2.4.0 and 2.4.1 updates of the iHost. I hope you find this useful and um, yeah see you in the next video.